Hi everyone, today I want to show you a very cool project, Open Web UI, which was formerly known as Olama Web UI. That is a user-friendly self-hosted web UI, which is designed to operate entirely offline. That means that you can run it with a local model and you don't have to make a request to, let's say, OpenAI. So it's completely free to use if you use it with Olama, but it also works with OpenAI. If you have a look at the user interface, you can clearly see that it's heavily inspired by ChatGPT. And if we scroll a little bit down, we can see all of the available features. So we've got full markdown support. That means we can force our LLM to write code and we can just copy that code and paste it in our editor, which is very nice. It also provides a voice interface. We can use functions by just providing code to the models. We can perform local retrieval augmented generation. We can also do web search for React. That means we can provide a link of a website and be able to ask questions about information real time of that website. We can use image generation, for example, with OpenAI Starly's API. And what's really, really cool is that we've got role-based access control. That means we can even host it in our company and give users specific roles, let's say to have access to specific features or models that we provided. It's very easy to set up. We just have to scroll a little bit down. And here we can see that there is a part quick start with Docker. And here is the installation with the default configuration. If you've got Olama on your computer, then you can just use that command. If you don't have Olama installed, then just follow the following installation process. First step is to download Olama. Go to olama.com and on the top right, you can find a download button. Here you can select the correct installer for your operating system. I'm on Windows, so I just click on download for Windows and download the executable. After downloading the installer, just follow the installation. And after that, you will have installed uh, Olama CLI on your computer. After the installation, Olama will automatically start a server, which runs on port 11434. You can check that if it's running by using netstat on Windows PowerShell and search for the process running on this port. Then you know that the Olama server is working. Now you can check if the CLI is working. So just type Olama and then minus minus help. And here you can see we've got multiple commands which we've got installed in our CLI. Okay, now we know that everything works, but we don't have a model yet. Just go to Olama and then on models. And here you can see these are the models we can download with Olama. So we will use Llama 3.1 and we've got three different versions, 8 billion parameters, 70 billion parameters and even 405 billion parameters. The smallest version has got 4.7 gigabytes and I think the largest one is around 231 gigabytes. So we will stick with the smallest one. I think the performance is quite good. And then we can just copy the command. And the command is Olama run and then the model and here at the end, the size of the model. So let's copy that. And this will pull, download the model. For you, it will take a little bit longer because I actually just downloaded it. And now we can see success. So the model was downloaded correct. And we can even chat directly with it. If you just type hi, then we can see this is the response from Lama. How is your day going so far? And we could use the model just like that from the CLI. After you ensured that Olama is installed on your computer correctly, just copy that command go to our terminal and then paste it here. As you can see, we expose the open web UI on port 3000. So this is where we can access it on our local machine. We then have to run Docker PS to see if everything works. And if you can see that the status is up and running and here we can see the health status, it's currently still starting. So we have to wait a few more seconds, but we can already go to our browser and then go to localhost port 3000. So this is the authentication endpoint that you will see on OpenWebUI. And first you have to create an account. So here you have to provide your name, your email and a password. It does not have to be your real email. You can just use some kind of fake email. After registering your user, you can just log in. And this is the user interface. So what can you do here? First, as you can see that this is German. So we can configure that to another language. Just click here on the right or on the bottom left and then click on settings. And here we can see the language. You can change it like this to English and then 
you can see everything is now English. To chat with Olama, just click on new chat and type a message. You can also click here on a suggested prompt. And here on the top, you can see that this is currently the only model that we've got available since we only downloaded the Llama 3.1 with 8 billion parameters. So we can just select that. We can also set it here as our default model and just type something like this. So hello, how are you? And then we can see that the model uses a streaming interface to respond. If you are a user of ChatGPT, then these buttons should look pretty familiar. You can regenerate the message, you can upload and download it. You can also click on read aloud, but that's actually quite horrible. You can copy the answer, you can also edit the answer. So a lot of options here. Okay, so let's say we are not really happy with the performance of Llama 3.1 with the 8 billion parameters, then we can easily add new models. Just click here on the top right and then on admin panel. And here we can see here we've got all of our users currently. This is the only one and we are, uh, we've got the admin role. So this is standard for the first user that is created. But now we have to click on settings and then here on the sidebar, click on models. So now we can add models. We can pull models from olama.com just by entering their name. So you can type something like this. So Mistral and then 7B. So this would download the Mistral 7B model here from Olama. Okay, so I cancel this because now instead of pulling an open source model, we want to add an OpenAI model. So if you want to use OpenAI in combination with um, OpenWebUI, just click on this button and now you have to paste your OpenAI API key there. Just paste it here, click on save and then we create a new chat. And now here we're gonna select a new model, the latest for all model of OpenAI and just ask, hi, how are you? And this will lead to the following response. Okay, now let's have a look how we can create prompts and also perform rag with OpenWebUI. Just click here on the top left on workspace and here we can see we've got all of our models. We can also delete or update them, but here let's now click on prompts. We can search prompts if you already created one and if you don't have one, just click on the plus symbol and here we can create a title. Let's say greeting prompt and this is the way that we can use it in a command. And now we just have to write a prompt. So let's say, say hello to and since we don't know who we want to say hello to, we can use a variable for that and we to use a variable, we just have to write brackets and then the name of the variable. So like this, and then click on save and create. And to use our prompt, we just have to go to our new chat and then press slash. And here we also get the suggestion for the prompt. And here this gets automatically highlighted. So I'm gonna show you that again, click enter. And here we can just type the name. And yeah, that's how this works. Okay, let's now have a look at how we can talk to documents so we can perform rec. So to create a new document and then just click here on add documents, but you can also just drag and drop a document here. And now we can also edit it like this. So this is just the file name. So the text is about a dog who likes skydiving. So this is the document just something uh, created with ChatGPT. So to ask something about this file, just create a new chat and then type hash. And here you can scroll through every documents. You can also make a selection for all documents, but we just want to use doc text here. And we could ask something like this. What is this document about? And here we can see the document appears to be a description or profile of a store called Joe's Skybound Canines. So here is the file. We can even see how this looks like as source. Okay, let's now have a look how we can chat against the website. So I want to know how Bayern played against Grasshopper Zurich today. So we can just copy that URL and then type a hash and then the website 
And now we can just ask, how did Bayern play today? Or something like that. And we can see according to the text, Bayern played a friendly match and won 4-0. Okay, that's great. So we can see that we can perform rack, we can make web search, but if that's not sufficient for you, then you can also add your own tools and functions. So what is a tool and what is a function? That's actually just a Python function. As you can see, this is an example tool and this class tools has got multiple methods that we can just write whatever we want. We can get the current time, we can get a calculator, we can get weather data if we provide the open weather API key here. As you can see, we got a lot of freedom what we want to add here. We can even add our own API and talk to our own APIs, whatever we want to do here. If you don't have any ideas yet, you can also click here on discover tool. This will lead you to the open web UI community website where you can get a lot of inspiration about tools like an import date tool, paperless tool, different prompts and a lot of stuff that you might want to explore. Okay, one last topic is the management of users. So you can add users like this. You can add them via form. Your users can also register via the web UI, but let's say you want a test user and type in a test email or you can also use a CSV import. What's really interesting is the following. So if you've got this user and the user has got a conversation, then you can see all conversations of that user. And I think that's a little bit a security issue. So if you want to use Open Web UI in a corporate environment, that might probably prevent you from using it there since data privacy regulations might not allow that. I currently also miss more roles than just admin and user like Llama only users or OpenAI only users. A little bit more control would be nice, but that will probably come in the future. Okay, that's it for this video. There are even more features that you could explore and it's also under heavy development, but for me, it's my go-to choice of using Olama on my local machine. I think it's a really great user experience and it's very easy to set up. So let me know what you think about this project. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye-bye.